Happy Friday, kittens. It is October 9th, 2020, and this is the Knit Cute Podcast recording number 13. Welcome. Hi, and thank you for joining me today. I am Amanda. Um, you can find me as So Nitpicky over on Instagram. And uh, I don't give my Ravelry information anymore, which is still throwing my intro off here because I'm still so used to giving it after years and years. Uh, you can find me over on my blog at knitcute.com, uh, on my YouTube channel, which is where you're probably watching this video, which is Knit Cute. And if you need to contact me, I now have a podcast email address, which is knit.cute.podcast at gmail.com. Uh, hi, how are you all doing? Uh, it's been a little while since I last recorded. Um, I have been doing these about once a month and then uh, I had so many knitting mishaps that I had no content for two months worth of time. So I am finally back because I have things to share with you and it is a lovely day here. I live just outside of Seoul in South Korea where we are currently stationed and it is about, oh I'd say it's about 70 degrees outside today. It's uh, the sun's going down because I am a later riser and uh, it's there's just a nice beautiful breeze going through the house and the air quality actually looks pretty decent out there. I can see the, the hills that almost look mountainous in the background. So, like I asked, how are you all doing? Uh, things have been going well here. Um, my children are finally back in physical school. The last time I talked to you all, they were supposed to be going back to school and then a couple days after the recording, um, there was a minor outbreak here in the Seoul area and the um, command here put the entire peninsula on lockdown again, which meant we went to distance learning for the first five weeks of school. Uh, this week the kids are back. They just completed their first full week of in-class classes and things seem to be going pretty well. Um, people are very healthy here compared to um, the situation in the states right now so it's very low risk to send the children to school and even so they are doing a lot of precautions regardless so that seems to be going pretty well i don't expect it to last forever because eventually there will be a second wave of coronavirus here in south korea i'm sure excuse me But um, for now, things are well in hand and it's nice because they are enjoying finally getting out. We have been on lockdown since middle of February and it finally ended, well, now middle of October or first third of October. <sighs> so I'm thinking, let me look at my notes here because it's been forever since I recorded and I'm really out of practice. No, mostly just it's about, hey, it's COVID. So. Today I have to share with you all a current knitting work in progress, a finished spin, and I'm working on a simple cross stitch project. Um, I'm still reading a lot, by the way, that's what I'm spending a lot of my time doing, but I am also still completely in the thralls of Animal Crossing um, New Horizons, the Switch game, and I have been really enjoying that. Um, especially because now it's fall and there's a bunch of Halloween stuff. The Halloween update went live not too long ago. And yes, I love my island and all my cute little animal villagers. Ooh, I am rambling. Okay, so first up, the project I, I think I had just started to show you all or talk to you all about the last time I recorded is long since dead. Um, it turns out that I did not look at the schematic closely enough and I didn't think things through, which is not shocking as I am a pretty reckless shoot from the hip kind of a knitter. And uh, I put a lot of time into that sweater, probably almost six weeks before I realized it wasn't gonna be viable, had to rip it all out. So I cast on a new sweater. This one is Enchanted by Expression Fiber Arts. Um, at the time I got this sweater pattern, it was free for I think signing up for a newsletter or something, but it's $5 on their website, I do believe. And Enchanted is a really simple rectangle that you fold over and it becomes a big shruggy cardigan. So I started that sweater and I am knitting this one in Malabrigo Rios in the cowboy colorway. And I got oh not too far into it about 10 days into working on it and I realized that I did not have enough yarn for it and because of the nature of 
kettle dyed yarn. I was going to need to order more yarn to see where in my, not really truly a gradient, but where in my gradient color progression I was going to put the new skeins. So this went on hold until actually just about a week ago when my yarn finally came in. But so far, this is what I have of Enchanted. Um, cowboy is, I don't know why this colorway is called Cowboy. It's actually a very galactic, spacey colorway. I'm, I had originally called this my Cowboy, or my Enchanted Cowboy cardigan, but I'm thinking about calling it my Strange Love cardigan because the colors on here remind me of one of my favorite books I've read so far this year, which is Strange Love by Anna Guire. I think it's available only on Amazon. I can check on that, but it's a very well-written sci-fi romance. It's also available on Audible. I can recommend that. I've listened to it twice through already. And anyway, it reminds me of that. But Enchanted has thick ribbon, it's a simple lace pattern, which you're not going to be able to see too much. I know I'm moving so much. I need to stop moving. Again, I'm out of practice. A simple lace pattern. And on the sides, it's there's a, a garter texture detail. So I'm finally moving on that. And this is, this is a slightly darker skein of the Rios. Um, Cowboy is colorway 215, I believe. Yes, 215. And uh, at the rate I'm moving, this will definitely be done before the next time I record, if it's a month. Um, I, I'm expecting to have it done in the next 10 days or so, to be honest. Even at the kind of slowish pace I'm taking it because it's it's knitting up really fast. Um, I'm doing only minor modifications on this pattern. Because it's a rectangle, it's pretty easy to modify to suit your needs because I am a wider and fatter individual. Um, I added one pattern repeat to it widthwise, and as we go lengthwise we'll see how it looks as I'm working with it. Um, because the yarn, I believe the yarn is superwash treated, uh, it will grow a little bit and I'll take that into account when I'm trying things on, but I wanted to make sure I had enough yarn first. So that's looking pretty good. I'm excited about it because it's a nice easy knit and there's only really two rows of the pattern that I have to think too hard, not even think hard, but just have to think about a little bit. So it's pretty easy to work on while I'm reading or while I'm listening to podcasts or doing some other things. And that was it. The big crafting news that I've shown off on Instagram and I'm going to never get sick of talking about is that that spin I started the last time I talked to you all in August and I had been working on for like a month at that point, I just finally finished it 100% last night. So this is three months worth of work, but this was a Hello Yarn combo spin. Um, and I can actually show you all the tags. I've started a, a physical analog crafting journal because I cannot use Ravelry anymore despite all the little tweaks and things they're making. And this is my page for that. So this is one braid of Shy Creature, Winter Stole the Color, and two braids of her 10th anniversary color, Happy, Happy, Thank You. Um, so three quarters of this is Rambouille or Rambouille, and one quarter of this spin is Polworth. These are all yarn, uh, wools that I enjoy spinning. They're all pretty soft. I think they're all Merino adjacent or Merino related breeds if I remember correctly. So they have shorter staple lengths. They're really springy and soft. And uh, yeah, so are you ready to see some big heckin' skeins of yarn? Because I managed to get this off in two skeins. But look at that. Oh, those Acreworks bobbins are magic. So the first skein here, and we'll get this a little closer too so you all can see a little better here. Just this is three ply, by the way. <laughs> uh-huh three months of my life. Uh, this first skein is nine ounces and 1,484 yards of traditional three-plied yarny goodness. Um, and this one took me, this first one was two thirds of the time by the time I got to the end of this. Um, and I averaged it out to see it is 5.8 yards per gram of yarn in here. Definitely making this lighter than a fingering weight. Um, I don't know if it's quite light enough to be a true lace weight, but it's definitely in that uh, heavy lace, light fingering spectrum. 
And then the second skein here is 7.6 ounces and 1,266 yards of, again, traditional three ply with just a little bit of chain ply at the end where I ran out of another ply to work with. Um, on this one, I ran out of the third ply fairly early on. Um, the well, I guess technically it was the first ply I spun because that was the thickest one because it was when I did first. Um, my third ply was the thinnest out of the three and because I bought a new ball winder and yeah, a ball winder and a skein wi uh, swift, a yarn swift, um, I ended up winding the yarn single for the third one into a center pole cake and worked from there. So about half of the skein is that. And then at the very end, I had just a tiny bit of that last part left and it became about a yard, maybe a yard and a half of chain plied singles at the end. So I'm really excited. And I love how this one has like these little rainbow bursts in here. Like this is like my favorite section of this, this skein of yarn It's this unintentional muted Hello Yarn Goodness Rainbow. Yeah, just look at that, such good stuff. So, and then this one averaged out to 5.9 yards per gram. So there's only, this yarn in here is averaged only slightly thicker than this one. Um, both of them have thick and thin bits. This one has more thick bin, bits than this one does, but overall they're pretty, they're actually pretty consistent looking even in the skein. Um, so I'm super happy with this. Um, so this ended up being, I started this during the virtual tour de fleece. Um, I unintentionally kept spinning it during the actual tour this year. And uh, yeah, I just finished it. So just look how big they are. I love them. Okay. We're gonna put that off to the side, otherwise I'm gonna get distracted by those. <sighs> I'm not gonna spin again for a while in case anyone <laughs> is wondering. Um, that one took a lot out of me. Um, I never expected it to take so long to spin, but all told it's 16.6 ounces or just over a pound of yarn and 2,750 yards of yarn total of three ply. So if you take that number and times it by four, that would get the full amount I spun from singles through yardage, and that would be over 11,000 yards. Mm -hmm. So, ooh. <laughs> um, I do have plans for that yarn already. I am planning to knit a boxy-ish top that is pieced together to, in order to keep the striping as thick as possible on both sides of the sweater as I work on it. I think I'm gonna modify it to have a bit of a V-neck um, v-neck to it in the front and it'll definitely be oversized you know kind of a drop shoulder with you know a small little sleeve when all is said and done um, I would like to have that cast on by Christmas time I think at the latest in the winter here I do have a couple other things I do need to finish up first so that is finally off the wheel my wheel has been put away for a while i'm probably not going to bring it out for at least a month or two until the next time i decide i want to work on a project which most of what i have left in my cabinet over here is combo spins to make socks for my husband which will be also three plies like this but slight, hopefully slightly thicker three plies than this so it's going to be a little bit before i feel like working on those And the last thing I've been working on is I have been working on a simple cross stitch in the hopes of getting myself pumped up to finally cross stitch the sampler for my second nephew who was born, was it earlier this year already? Or was it late last year? It was late last year. Oh goodness, he's gonna be one soon. Yeah, time is kind of weird right now, isn't it kittens? Like I have lost my ability to accurately gauge time anymore. So this last pattern, it's called the Geometric Triangles Temperature Cross Stitch. It is available on Etsy from a seller called Apricot Polka Dot, and it is $7.50. And this is a pattern where every day for 361 days, you take the high temperature, it's like a temperature blanket basically, and you cross stitch. In this one, it's a half square triangle. So, so far I've been playing catch up, and I think I'm, where am I in this right now? We're gonna look. I just finished up with 
March 12th. So I am through almost halfway, mid, halfway through March. And you can see so far things have been cold or cold, as cold as they get here. I mean, a lot of these temperatures, especially when we're heading to the greens here, I think it's already in the 50s and the low 60s. So uh, yeah, anyway, I'm really enjoying this. Uh, this is a printed uh, fabric, I can't, whether you call it Ada or Aida cloth. Um, I don't usually work with it, but I'm enjoying how nice and stiff it is, especially because of the printing process, because I haven't needed to use a, um, a hoop at all to work on this. It's just been really nice and easy to do. I thought it would look really cute on this cloud background. And uh, yeah, by about the time I catch up with this, I should be doing regular daily temps come late November or early December. Don't mind the children in the background. So I've been working on that. I've been working on this in Cosmo Embroidery Floss. I've got my whole little thing right here of rainbow colors and the coolest color are these fuchsias and then going through to the blues greens and eventually the hottest color will be red so it's going to be a rainbow progression all the way through there and I think we're finally through the hottest days of the year so for August um, I think that's when the hottest ones will be it'll be good um, I'm using I think 13 colors on this the pattern is written for 16 colors um, because I'm in Celsius here instead of Fahrenheit. Um, if I had enough in between colors and if I had searched my floss enough, I probably could have found them. I would have liked to have added an additional six colors because then I could have, because I'm going in increments of three degrees Celsius, which is a pretty big temperature jump actually. Um, I would have preferred to have done it in increments of two for more color variety, but uh, it's working how it is. So yeah, I feel like I just really rushed through this. Um, I'm talking a little fast today and I apologize. Uh, everyone just got home from school not too long ago and uh, yeah, I'm feeling a little self-conscious. So today I'm actually drinking some tea. I've gotten back into my tea drinking habit as of late. And this is David's Tea s'mores chai which is my current favorite flavor of black tea i have one mug of it every day and this is in one of my older ravelry mugs that i bought back from the shop way back in the day i still really love this one i love uh, vera's illustrations but yeah that's um sadly i think that's really it um Things are just what they are, aren't they? So I'm going to put these notes off to the side too. And yeah. So I hope you have all been well. Um, I hope you're staying healthy. I hope you're wearing your masks and trying to social distance and keeping your hands clean. And I hope that if it's an option for you, you're staying in and you're keeping your children in until the virus runs its course, which will never end at this point because it keeps finding new hosts to be in. Whew. That's a downer to end on. So, kittens, until I talk to you all again, be your very best selves and do good things and stay healthy. Bye.